Madam Secretary, please take the roll. Assemblywoman Anderson. Present. Assemblywoman Bill Bray Axelrod. Here. Assemblywoman Brown May. Assemblywoman Considine. Present. Assemblyman DeLong. Present. Assemblywoman Duran. Present. Assemblyman Kerr. Present. Assemblywoman Hansen. Here. Assemblywoman LaRue Hatch. Here. Assemblyman Watts. Assemblyman Urich. Here. Chair Cohen. <laughs> Thank you, and I am here. Please mark the members who aren't present, uh, absent, excused, or present when they arrive. I know they're presenting in other committees. Uh, so with that, we will dispense with um, the introductions, as I think we all know, and go into our bill hearing for Senate Bill 311. And welcome, Senator Hansen. Please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair, member of the committee. I'm Senator Ira Hansen, representing Senate District 14. This bill is a very basic bill, and uh, yep, I didn't say simple, I said basic. Before I get into the bill, it only takes a minute, seriously. I, um, this bill came about become, because of a man named Rex Flowers. Rex was very influential in Washoe County, very active in the wildlife community. Unfortunately, Rex passed away two weeks ago. So this was kind of his, but this was his baby. Essentially, all the bill does is allow people who, uh, adults who receive hunting tags, uh, big game tags, antelope, elk, uh, uh, mule deer and so forth, they can give those tags to somebody who is under 18 years of age. And the whole bill literally reads, the commission may adopt regulations establishing a program which authorizes the person to transfer his or her tag to hunt a big game mammal to any person who is under 18 years of age. Originally, the may was shall, uh, and I'll put a fiscal note on it, so to get it out of finance, we made the shall of May, and uh, the rest of the bill, that's the whole bill. There were a couple other sections which were amended out uh, at the request of the Department of Wildlife. Um, I didn't have anybody coming to testify on Saturday from, from Endow, but they were supportive <coughs> in finance of this amended version, and that is the entire bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I do have a question from Assembly Member um, Bill Bray right, Axelrod. Axel, I know, yes, I know. Thank you. And we're all tired. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate it. We really are tired. Okay, and so maybe this will explain why my question is like this, but I don't get it. I really, why do we need to transfer to under 18 year olds? I know we've done this in the past, like with people with disabilities. I think we had a bill last session or session, they kind of mushed together. I just, I don't understand. I'm sorry. Well, all right, let me, okay. uh, Ira Hansen again. Uh, let me give you a real a simple example. Um, this year I applied for tags. Um, Alexis has a, a nephew who was 15 years old and never had an opportunity to hunt who also applied. Um, unfortunately, both of us were not successful. But let's say I was successful and he was not, and he would like to hunt. And I, at my age, honestly, I hunt now to be with my kids and grandkids and stuff like that. So I, this would allow me, because right now I'm not allowed to transfer that tag legally to anybody. I'm the only one that's allowed to use it. So the commission will be able to have the policy changes to allow me as an adult to legally give that tag to, in this case, a 15-year-old young man who wants to hunt, doesn't come from a hunting background, but give him the opportunity to get out in the field and, and uh, go after big game. That's really the whole genesis behind the bill. Okay, Th that's what I was thinking. So aren't you sort of like gaming the, pardon the pun, gaming the system? Because you're Bad now pun, like going like, like I'm not even gonna do it, so I'll put one in for you too. I mean, I, uh, I just. Well, I, I, I guess you could have something like that, and that's why the commission would have to set up some policies to try to prevent that. Um, I think honestly, this will be used very rarely. Um, most people, when they could, tags are uh, getting increasingly rare. There were actually over 425,000 applications this year for complete allocation of only 18,000 tags in the entire state. And they've been trying aggressively to get younger people involved in, in outdoor sports. And like in every, every uh, 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 arena, you'll see less and less young people getting outdoors. And this is something that 
for guys like me that have a hunting tradition in the family, it's just a way of life, but uh, what we've noticed is there's been an attrition factor and the actual age of people participating in outdoor sports, including hunting, fishing, and so forth, is as aging. There's less and less of a young component. So the hope behind this with Rex Flowers in particular was to give young people an opportunity when they come up to somebody like me uh, who has one, and in, in this case, the example of the 15-year-old, and, and uh, share that opportunity with them and to encourage younger people to be able to get out and participate in these types of activities. The chair's saying I can say, and I, and I thank you for that because that makes a big difference. Um, you know, I, I'm not a hunter. I could not imagine hunting, but I do, I am an environmentalist and I do understand what sportsmen do for our population and how you are, can be an environmentalist and be, I know uh, one of, some of our members. So that I like, because I, I'm sure that is true with under 18. It's probably just, you know, my dad was not a hunter either, but like I, you know, I, I can see that. So thank you for saying it like that because I was not getting it. Thank you. Well, I think, uh, thank Ira Hans again. I think you'll find that we, we share a common interest. I think that you'll find the sportsman community are some of the most aggressive conservationists you'll see anywhere. And for decades now have been putting their, their dollars where their mouths are and really been instrumental in helping keep uh, the game populations in Nevada uh, going forward. So we, we share a common bond in wanting to do things good for the environment. Uh, Assemblymember Yurik. Thank you, Chair. Um, and Senator, thanks for coming and answering our questions on this highly concerning bill. Um, I, I know how difficult it is to get, for example, a, a bull tag, right? I think I average is somewhere around 15 years. And so if under this bill, if you can clarify for me, it sounds like if I put in, started, I started putting in a tag and it took me the average of 15 years, I started putting you in when my kid wasn't even born yet and we get to 15 years and I happen to get a tag and I wanna take my 15 year old out to go hunting with me. Now, I, I love my kid to death, but here I am hunting, right? And I've been waiting 15 years and I wanna take down this trophy bull, but just because my kid is a minor, I have to hand my rifle over to him and let him take the shot? Is that what your bill proposes? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, is he more likely to hit the target than you or something? <laughs> No, I, I, the bill, honestly, I, I, the example you give, though, there is something about this. There's a legal question here. If, for example, somebody in my family is under 18 and I'm going out with them and, I, and we do want to hunt, it is illegal currently for me to allow them. In the scenario he was using, let's say uh, some in Europe gets a tag and he goes out there and he says, look, you know, you're 14, you haven't got a tag, I'm going to let you shoot my animal. That's a felony, That's right. okay? That's a serious thing. So to prevent that type of... Uh, temptation, if you will, we could actually have somebody like in this scenario uh, legally transfer a tag to somebody under 18. In all seriousness, Chair, I, I, I do just want to go on and say that uh, this is a, this is a, a great bill, um, and it, under that perfect scenario that you're talking about, it encourages uh, um, youth to get out. And if, for example, if I had multiple deer tags over the course of my life and I did have a nephew or somebody come over, or even one of my little kids, right, and I want to get them out there doing it, we're not increasing the number of tags that are available. We're not, you know, depleting our, our herds or anything anymore. It's the same number of tags. It just allows that. I think this is a great bill, and I thank you for bringing it. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Assemblymember Gurr. I want to say ditto, but I also have a question. Why did they want to change it from shall to may? Uh, the fiscal note. I'm sorry. Ira Hansen, for the record. Uh, the fiscal note. Um, well, end out put on a fiscal note. I think it was seventeen thousand dollars for the first year, and something similar the second. So I wanted shall because we have a similar program that uh, uh, Senator Titus put in a couple years ago, and it really hasn't been aggressively implemented. So we did go with shall. Uh, you'll notice Senator Titus is a co-sponsor on the bill, but because to get it out of finance, frankly, uh, you got to do what you got to do, and so to keep the bill alive, we got rid of the the, the shall, and okay, now it's well, a may. I certainly hope we can make them do it when they may want to. I, you know, Rex Flowers is a friend of mine too and this is a great bill for him. Thank you. You're welcome. Just so you know too, I, uh, we've had extensive conversations with the new director, uh, Department of Wildlife, Alan Janay, and uh, Tim Robb, who is the, uh, the uh, uh, rural liaison for the governor, is also very much aware of this. So there'll be several new appointments on the Wildlife Commission, so I think you'll see this uh, going forward very aggressively, uh, assuming it passes. 
uh, Assembly Member LaRue Hatch. Thank you, Chair. So my question is, could this be monetized? Could someone apply for a bunch of tags and then people who want to hunt with their kids pay to have those tags transferred to them? Uh, Ira Hanskin, very interesting question. Um, first of all, the odds of getting tagged, the tag allocation process is very, very strict. There are, the ability of somebody to apply and get multiple tags is almost unheard of, frankly. In fact, it is unheard of. You, you just, like I said, in my family, I bet we had altogether over 25 applications and we got three tags. So the idea of getting multiple tags and then being able to sell those, um, I think number one, that would be illegal under current law and I would assume the commission would also ensure that that kind of, of a, a, an illegal practice would remain illegal. So I just wanted to confirm though, it doesn't have to be a family member. You could transfer it to anybody as long as they're under 18. Correct. Ira Hansen again, correct. And then just to confirm, we already have regulations about minors hunting and how they safely hunt. All of that's already been put into regulation. Correct. Yes, Madam Chair, Ira Hansen again. Yeah, you're not, if you're 14 to 18, you have to hunt uh, a hunter that in that age bracket has to be in the presence of an adult. And an adult, as I recall, is 19 and up. So, yeah, we have a whole bunch of them without getting too much into the weeds. There are a lot of checks and balances in place to uh, maximize safety. And just for the record, Nevada has not had serious uh, issues with that in decades. They, the, the level of safety compared to the number of hunters is remarkably low. It's a very, very safe sport. Thank you, Assemblymember Duran. Hi, and thank you for the question. I'm just, I, I know I haven't had too many um, experiences on this committee, but my question is when you say transfer, is that just for the one time thing or is it for the season or is it your your uh, tag for life? I'm, I'm trying to understand. Oh, okay, no, exactly. uh, thank you. Ira Hansen again. Uh, the way the tag system works, you apply for a tag and there are seasons that are set up by the Wildlife Commission. For example, this year, I think the, the, the rifle mule deer season is October 5th through the 20th or something like that. So if you transferred in this example, a, a mule deer buck tag, a rifle tag, um, that the, your use of that tag would only be for one season and would be strictly limited to the, to the uh, week or two that the Wildlife Commission has set aside for that specific thing. So it wouldn't be year round um, for these types of big game tags. So after you transfer for that, do you have to reapply for it or it automatically goes back to you the next season? Maybe I don't understand. Ira Hansen, well, no, the way it would work, um, I would have an opportunity to apply again the following season. There would be no way for the most part, there are some, there are some cases where if they have extra tags left over, you can actually apply again, but that's almost unheard of now. Um, so you get one shot at it, pardon bad pun, you get one opportunity to have a tag and if I was to transfer it, there isn't in that same season opportunity for me to then apply for another tag. It's strictly a one one season arrangement. Assemblymember uh, Constantine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, my husband's a hunter, but it's been a little while since since he's he's gone hunting. But if I remember properly, he and I don't know if this still happens. He would have a group together, and if when they all would put in with for tags, if one member of the group got a tag, then everyone in the group would get a tag. So I guess my first question is, does that still happen? Um, and then my second question is, just for clarity, if you get a tag and then something happens and you don't want to use it, what happens to it now? Does it go back and then go back into the um, uh, lottery for that, or what happens to that tag if you choose not to use it otherwise? Ira Hanskin, to the first part of your question, yes, you are allowed to apply as a group. Um, some people still do that. The problem is um, if it, one person, yeah, everybody gets a tag or nobody gets a tag. So it's not like one person in the group can get one. But in some cases, families like to hunt or, or different groups of people like to hunt, and they'll apply hoping everybody gets one. That's kind of declined a little bit because of the, the reduction in, in tag numbers. Um, what was the second part of your question? I'm sorry. Just because my husband's never given up his tag, what happens if you don't oh. use it now? Thank you. Ira Hans again. What happens now is if, let, let's say right now I apply for a tag, but for whatever reason I'm not going to be able to hunt in October, uh, you know, something comes up, I can turn that tag back into the Department of Wildlife currently if I want. 
and they actually have a, a, a waiting list of people who are unsuccessful who then, you know, there's, there's literally a list, you know, there might the top 10, if I turn that tag back in, one of the top 10 would get that tag. What would typically happen, though, is if, I, if I don't hunt, I just don't hunt, and the tag is not used. And, and so, you know, let's say I wait too long, and in September, uh, two weeks before the hunt, I've got to go on some business trip out of state or something, and I miss that opportunity, the tag simply is not used. There's no way to turn it back in currently. Thank you so much for the answers. So we had something like this came up last session, and in the conversation I had with my husband, he was uh, kind of um, sure that he was opposed to this bill because everyone puts in a tag and has an equal chance of getting a tag in this situation. And if you get a tag and you don't use it, instead of it going back to other people who are still waiting for it, you bypass that whole system and give it to a chosen person. So is there a response to that? Because I do have to go home after the session. <laughs> <laughs> well, your, your husband has a point. And like in my case, if my family applies and I'm successful, I could give it to one of my grandsons, for example. Um, Currently, that doesn't exist, so your husband does have a point if, there, if this opportunity comes up. And there may be some people, like me, honestly, I will apply, and hopefully if my grandkids don't get one or her nephew doesn't get one, well, then I'll, I'll be able to give them that opportunity. So because it is a, uh, um, a limited number, your husband is not entirely incorrect. I would bet, though, that the way this thing will be set up with the Wildlife Commission, that this will be fairly rare in, in application to try to help make sure that everybody who applies does have some level of equality when it comes to the actual um, uh, getting of the tags. We're gonna go back to Assembly Member LaRue Hatch. Thank you, Chair. So I have kind of a two-part question. I'll let you do the first part and then I'll have a follow-up. Um, the first part is the person you're transferring to, do they, is they, is there a requirement that they had already applied for a tag and been denied or can you transfer it to someone who's not applied at all? Well, I, um, Ira Hanskin, first of all, they would have to have a hunting license and they would have had to pass hunter safety and get a hunter safety certificate. So they have some level of that. There is nothing yet. Remember, this is just a, they've got to set up the regulations and there may be some regulations to try to say, well, if you're unsuccessful and you cannot have this transfer, this may be something uh, to, to, for people that didn't get, have an opportunity to do that. Now right now, just so everybody knows, there is in the tag process, what is called a youth hunt and a disproportionate number of tags go to youths already. So there may not be a lot of this um, youth things, like two of my grandsons got a tag and nobody else did, and they were in that youth category. Um, as far as how the Department of Wild, excuse me, the, the uh, Wildlife Commission structures this thing, um, th that's probably one of the questions that they would address. So remember, this is very generic and broad. All this is gonna do is give them the ability to set up the regulatory framework to make this process work. And undoubtedly, that will be one of the things that they will need to address. So then the second part of my question is, are we creating an entitlement for young people who already have an advantage and now they don't even have to put in the work that their parents put in and they're riding on their parents' coattails to get a tag? A very good point. Um, I would say yes, I actually were trying to get young people involved. That's uh, as uh, Assemblywoman Bill Bray Oxelrod uh, asked, I am definitely trying to give young people an advantage. So um, in my opinion, now, that doesn't mean that the Wildlife Commission will structure it that way. But the whole intent of this bill is to get more young people into these sports. Guys like me at 62, you know, I might get the tag, and when an opportunity like our 15-year-old comes in, not even necessarily a family member, I would love to have, give them an advantage in law and give me the chance to do it. And by the way, that was Rex Flowers' whole intent, too. He was definitely wanting to encourage younger people into the sport more. So, yeah, there is an advantage now, and we may give them a slightly greater advantage, which I hope the Wildlife Commission will do. I... You know, for me, I, I think it does make sense to have the people going out when they're younger and their parents are there supervising and they're, as opposed to someone who's 18 who's never participated in a hunt before who all of a sudden decides, I'm going to go out and do, I'm going to go out and hunt. And they haven't, I mean, they, they do have the, the hunter safety training that we do require, but they don't, you learn a lot out in the field and they're not getting the hands-on training with having a parent or other close friend or relative there who's supervising. So, um, okay, so with that, we will go to Assemblymember Hansen. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator, for being here. <laughs> I have to tell you, you know, I have been sweating this bill. Um, you are known for bringing really controversial legislation, so I'm really uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> uh, all kidding aside, um, well, actually, do you have concerns that the governor would veto such, <laughs> such legislation? Um, there's been rumors, yeah. but um, in all seriousness, uh, maybe explain a little bit th how I have viewed this is this is a mentoring thing. We do this in a lot of other spheres uh, with youth, and um, I think because we had a situation, although that's not the reason for the bill, we see there are youth out there that don't have the opportunities because maybe they don't have a dad who hunts, maybe they don't have a dad who's involved, a, or a brother or a sister that's really into hunting. So there are youth out there, and I think Mr. Flowers understood that, that this is an opportunity to mentor, whether it's an actual family member or not. It's an opportunity. I know in high school, um, you know, you had that opportunity with a, a beloved teacher of ours in high school that took you out hunting a lot because your dad was busy working. So um, could you elaborate a little bit more about how maybe Mr. Flowers, you know, his vision, um, why, why this even came up and maybe when did it come up in his mind? Very good, Senator Hanson again. I am deeply concerned about the governor. I'm gonna go see him about it in case there's a veto on this thing, but as of now, I think I'm okay on that. <laughs> Can you talk to him no, about sir, a few bar bills? <laughs> we, we have a this few other bills. This is gonna be part Can of the end game we've all been talking about. I know that you guys really want this bad, but um, no. Uh, I think uh, Assemblywoman uh, uh, Hanson's point is very um, better stated. That it's a mentor concept, okay? You know. I just use the family example because obviously we have a very large family, but for a lot of for the, a lot of people um, who have a neighbor kid who is disadvantaged, underprivileged, doesn't have opportunities to go out, and you know there's a lot of people that mentor kids like that, and they may enjoy hunting and fishing and things like that, and they just want to do something positive with a younger person. This would simply give in a mentor state an opportunity to do something like that. And they may have an interest in hunting and they apply for a tag and then they've got a kid down the street who expresses an interest and he's done the hunter safety thing but he doesn't have a father in his life or whatever. This would be, a, be an opportunity for somebody like Mr. Flowers, frankly, who, uh, who did similar things like that to be able to help a young person go out, male or female, and go out and uh, ex experience great outdoors in the state of Nevada. Okay, so seeing no other questions, we're going to move on to support, if you'd like to step back. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Kyle Davis. Today, on behalf of the Coalition for Nevada's Wildlife, we are here in support of this bill. As you have heard um, in Senator Hansen's testimony, a uh, former uh, member of the Wildlife Coalition, Rex Flowers, was instrumental in working with Senator Hansen on bringing this concept forward. I just want to talk a little bit about why it's so important that we um, that we work to to get youth involved in hunting and fishing, um, and really all these outdoor activities. Um, a big part of, I guess in two ways, the importance of wildlife conservation. One, one reason is, the, um, is just the awareness that, that we find that people that actually have experience outdoors, that are able to participate in these types of activities, have a greater appreciation for the importance of protecting wildlife habitat, for the importance of clean water, for the importance of, uh, of healthy lands. And that's the thing that you really that you could really gain an appreciation for when you are out in the field, when you are trying to figure out where are the animals out here, where, where, if I was, if I was a deer, if I was an elk, where would I, where would I be on this landscape? It really gives a great appreciation for, uh, for Nevada's environment and for um, the importance of protecting these areas uh, for our wildlife species. So that's one reason, and that's obviously great when you can learn that as a, as a youth. I guess the other reason that I would point to, and I think this committee is certainly well aware, but the way that we fund wildlife conservation in this state and really in North America um, is through the North American Wild Model for Wildlife Conservation, 
where a lot of that funding comes from the funds that are expended for these types of things, for tag applications, for hunting licenses, and uh, excise taxes on guns and ammunition. And all of that money goes to fund these conservation efforts. It goes to, they put that money, our state wildlife department puts that money on the ground and, you know, for the protection of wildlife habitat, for increasing um, oppor opportunities for hunting and increasing um, our wildlife populations. So those are just two of the main reasons why we think it's so important to make sure that we are getting youth involved in hunting and we think that this bill is another step that we can take to make sure that we're passing on these traditions to the next generation and passing on the ethic of wildlife conservation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Okay, seeing no one else in Carson City and seeing no one in Las Vegas, BPS, if we could go to the phones, please. To testify in support of Senate Bill 311, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Good evening, Chair Cohen and members of the committee. My name is uh, Matthew Wilkie, uh, W-I-L-K-I-E for the record, and I'm calling in support of Senate Bill 311. Um, many people that know me politically may be surprised. I grew up hunting and fishing in Southern Oregon. Um, I, this bill brings me back to a story that my father told me growing up, um, hunting, um, opening day of hunting season, season 1987. Um, my mother went into early labor and was forced to for, give birth to me um, and uh, my dad always would remind me how me go, get, being born early prevented my mother from using the tag that year. So I think that this would be a bill that would maybe prevent that from happening going forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next caller, BPS. Chair, there are no additional callers to provide support testimony. Uh, thank you, BPS. Okay, with that, we will go to opposition, seeing no one else in the room in Carson City, no one in Las Vegas. BPS, if we could go to the phones for opposition. Chair, there are no callers at this time. Thank you. So uh, also seeing no one in neutral, well, no one for neutral because there's no one else in the room in Las Vegas or Carson City. Uh, just checking BPS, anyone on the phones in neutral. There are still no callers. Okay, so with that, uh, Senator, would like to come up and make final statement? You don't have to. Just uh, say thank you for the, uh, the, the hearing today. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, so with that, I will close the hearing on Senate Bill 311, and we will take a brief recess. Okay, so with that, we're going to come back from our recess and we're going to go into a work session for Senate Bill 311. So, uh, Mr. Anthony, if you will. Thank you, Chair Cohn. Uh, Nick Anthony, for the record, uh, before the committee this afternoon is the bill you just heard, Senate Bill 311 and its first reprint, sponsored by Senator Hansen, Titus, Gokachia, et al., uh, again, just heard, Senate Bill 311 authorizes the Board of Wildlife Commissioners to adopt regulations to allow a person to transfer his or her tag to hunt a big game mammal to any person who is under 18 years of age, and there were no amendments, Madam Chair. Thank you. Committee, do we have any questions? Seeing none, I'll take a motion. I have a motion from Assembly woman Hansen. I have a second from Assemblyman Gurr. Do we have any comments? Okay, first I'll go to Assemblywoman Bilbrey Axelrod. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm so tired. Hi. Um, I am going to vote this um, out of committee, I, I, and, I, and I'm probably going to vote for it on the floor as well, but I do hope that um, there aren't unintended consequences like I said, um, so, but I do trust the commission. I know they'll do it. I'm happy that it's a may, not a shall. Um, so just wanted to put the, get that on the record. Thank you, Assemblywoman Considine. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I do have concerns that this could potentially increase chances of one person getting a tag if there's a, a family of hunters that really wants their son to get that tag and they all put in with no intention to, for them using the tag if one of them gets a tag for their son. Um, so I will vote it out of, com out of committee, but I just have some concerns that I need to think over because we just got this, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Seeing uh, no other comments, all those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, Assembly Member Gert. I understand the concerns and I think they're really valid. It's not gonna happen. Tags are so, so rare that if, it, at my age, at 75, if I draw a bull tag, I'll be damned if my kid's gonna shoot that bull. <laughs> you know, it just, it isn't gonna happen. No matter how old he is or I am, if I draw another bull tag in the state of Nevada, he's not gonna get it nor is my daughter or my grandsons or anybody else. It's my tag. I've been putting in for five years now to get a deer tag. And of course, if I never get another tag, I've had enough. But, but and maybe at 80, I'll give it a consideration, but not yet. So I think the program's wonderful. I think it uh, helps get rid of some illegality that's out there right now. We didn't bring that up, but it goes on. And I think it's a great program. I see Mr. Gers next BDR will be a BDR to uh, transfer your tag to senior citizen. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So seeing no other comments, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oppose, nay. Okay, and that passes unanimously, and I will give the floor statement that we're not going to have to... I was going to do MacArthur. No, Assemblymember MacArthur. <laughs> All four statements go to Assemblymember MacArthur. So, okay, with that, that brings our work session to a close. And uh, we will go into public comment. Do we have anyone for public comment in Carson City? No one jump into the table. Seeing no one in Las Vegas, BPS, do we have anyone on the phone for public comment? Chair, the public line is open and working, but we have no callers at this time. Okay, so with that, um, we still are scheduled for hearings for the rest of session. I don't know if we're gonna get anything. I think it's likely we will not, but um, just stay tuned and let me just check this message to make sure. Okay, so anyway, um, but in case we don't, I wanna thank everyone for a really great session. Uh, especially our staff and today especially Mr. Anthony for filling in but our staff we handled a lot of um, complicated issues that most people in the building just don't even understand so I really appreciate the efforts made to get to learn the issues and um, yeah so please go ahead um, since this may be our last one I wanted to specifically thank you chair you've uh, run the committee extremely fairly very well balanced, given everyone an opportunity to say their piece. I really appreciate it, and it's been a joy serving with you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I just got the word we're recessing, but I don't think we're, I don't think we have anything else today. But, but okay, so with that, we are in recess. And growth and infrastructure members, uh, we need some time to turn over this room and get ready. So maybe 15, 20 minutes, we'll be right back in here. And for those of you that also serve on natural resources, you're going to get a double dose of Senator Hansen today.